All right, we're going to get straight into the math. Today, we're going to start on tangents and circles, and we're just going to be looking at the basics, guys. All right, so before we start any work that we would do on tangents and circles, we need to consider some of the rules that we know about tangents. All right, so who can remind us, by the way? Does anybody remember what is a tangent? Who has a definition of a tangent for us? Yes, Katleho. A line that touches the circle on one point. Excellent. Good. Yes, that's exactly it. So our tangent is a line that's going to touch our circle once, only once. If it touches any more than once, then it's no longer a, a tangent. It's then a chord or an extended chord, as somebody else was saying. Okay, so we need to make sure that it only touches once. And I know that as soon as my tangent touches my circle, the line from the cent circle center or the radius from the circle center to that tangent is going to give me a 90 degree angle. And I can also look at the point from the circle center to any point on my tangent, creating a right angled triangle with the center and that point and the tangent. And in order to find the distance of any of these lines, we can just use Pythagorean theorem because it is then a 90 degree angle. Um, and we can use that. All right, so some of the things that we need to remember, we know that, okay, the 90 degree angle will be created by our radius and our tangent because they are parallel, not parallel, perpendicular to each other. And we also know that the gradient of the tangent multiplied by the gradient, gradient of the radius will be equal to negative one. Okay, I need us to note here, guys, that every time they're telling us about the gradient of a tangent, when we think of a tangent, we are always going to be talking about a line. Okay. A tangent is a line. And we need to make sure that we're remembering that whenever we see any of the situations that we're about to find ourselves in here, a tangent is usually a line. Um, and we can always find the equation of a circle, which we should know. And we can also look at the equation of a line. Okay, so we need to make sure that we're remembering both of those things. Oh, one more thing, our radius is also a line. Okay, <laughs> our radius over here, uh, our radius, this is also a line. Okay, and we know quite a lot about the equations of a straight line, and we know quite a bit about the equations of a circle. Now, this next part that we're going to look at over here, right? comes from a, a circle geometry theorem that we use. Does anybody remember what theorem this is? If I have this point B over here and it draws the line BT to a tangent and this draws the line AB to a tangent. Anybody remember in circle geometry what this is called? Oh, it's not tan chord. That's it, Tando, that's it. Okay, good. Okay, Shisana, it's it's not quite, it's not quite tangents at a point. It's tangents from the same point. So you'll see that AB and TB both start at B. And they go to the same circle and they only, they each touch the, um, the circle once. So as soon as this, the, both these tangents come from the same point, then both of these sides over here are going to be equal, right? And we know that from the circle center to the tangent on the line over there will have 90 degrees. And then we'll also know, okay, that we're going to be constructing a little bit. Teacher Lee will be touching on that a little bit. There's a couple of things that will happen if we then construct a line from A to T, there'll be quite a lot of things happening over there as well. Okay, all right. And then we also know, I'm looking at teacher Lee's uh, notes over here, that BACT will be a kite with two pairs of adjacent sides. So I can even draw the line from C all the way to B, and it can create that same effect that we would have if we had a kite. And that takes us back to quadrilaterals. We need to then remember the properties of a cut. 
Okay, all right. We're going to look at a quick example of what we're talking about here, and we're going to try and figure this one out together. All right, so the example over here that's given says, determine the equation of the tangent. And remember, we spoke about the tangent being a line. It's a straight line. It's a straight line. Right. And <clears throat> if we want to find the tangent, the equation of our tangent, we're going to have to use some of the information that we've been given. Now they've given us the they've given us the equation to the circle. What do we know? What can we extract from this equation of the circle that we can use on our drawing of the circle over here? Anybody got any ideas? Okay, the radius, yes, for sure. Okay, we're going to find out from this because this is going to be the radius squared as per the formula. We know that our radius is actually going to equal five. Great. Good, Ayanda and Lidw Lidwina. I hope I said that correctly, Lidwina. Um, you guys are onto something. It's going to give us our coordinates, right? We know that from this first part over here, we can extract the X coordinate and we can extract the Y coordinate from the second part over here. Okay, which means that our equation will read, okay, or our coordinates for C will read three and one. Okay, yes, Pumi. Um, I was gonna say that we find the gradient of C is. Yo, you know, I feel like, I feel like you're like three steps ahead because that was the next question I was going to ask, but you've oh, already let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> so, so I'm going to ask it anyway. Pumi, what do we do after we find the, the <laughs> of C? Uh, we find the gradient of CS and then you know that Beautiful. the gradient of the, um, the radius and the tan is equal to negative one. Therefore, you will find the gradient of the tangent and then do the y is equal to mx plus c mm -hmm. and sub in s and then find c and then find the equation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, I think what Toby is hiring, Pumi is going to be your guys' new uh, matric maths teacher because I think she just kind of stole my job there. And she did the whole thing for me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what else it is that I can do. She's already let all my cats out of the bag. All right. So <laughs> as Mpumi, as Mpumi has said, as Pumi has said, okay, we're going to find the gradient of this line because we know that these two are going to be perpendicular. So if we can find the gradient of CS, we can then find the gradient of the tangent. Pumi, spot on. All right, good. So we can look for the, the gradient over here. I'm going to take my y values, one, what, five minus one over six minus three, and that is equal to one over three. All right, so we know that the gradient of CS is equal to one over three, but we know that M tan times M rad must equal to negative one. So if I have the gradient of the radius, which is one over three, what is the gradient of the tangent going to be equal to? Therefore, M tan is equal to, you can pop this one in the chat. Stefan, I can tell you now, is it, I'm not saying it correctly. Uh, Yo, that's quite the name. That is quite the name. Tshoyik, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I'm very sorry if I'm butchering your name. You're going to have to help me out. Okay, good. We know that M10 is going to equal to negative three. Now, there are two different ways that we can possibly find this answer. You can just take your negative one over here and divide it by one over three. What I like to do is I like to take the number that I've got over here, one over three, and I like to flip them around. I flip them around. Okay, so I'm going to get three over one. And then if this is positive, I make this one negative. If that one is negative, I make this one positive. So my answer is going to be negative three over one, which is the same as negative three. All right, so now we've got our gradient of our tangent. 
And we know that our equation of a tangent will be the equation of a line. So we can use y is equal to mx plus c. We've got I'm our x. Since you're up, ma'am. Hello. Negative. Yes, my boy. Uh, can I ask, isn't 5 minus 1 and 6 over 6 minus 3, 4 over 3? Look at me. Thank you so much for catching me. See, I was testing. I was testing you and nobody else figured it out until until you did 100 <laughs> percent i'm very yeah. sorry yes we we all missed it we all missed it well done thank you so much for correcting us okay yeah. excellent so our our gradient is actually negative three over four it's actually negative three over four guys okay and now we can continue with the sum thank you my boy you need to tell me your name because now um you've you've saved our sum and we need to we need to thank you because you've uh, saved us. It's Chofajo. Oh, Chofajo, thank you so much. Thank you for saving us. <laughs> okay, all right. Then we're going to sub in the point. Okay, but can I sub in the point three one, guys? Can I sub in the point three one? <laughs> Faye, what's up, my sweetie? I hope I'm. Is it Faye? It's Faye. I'm, and now I'm. I'm just yes, making. Madam. I think. Hi, yes. I want to ask, ma'am. You know when you said that um the you said something about the radius and times the the what do you call this? Sorry again, the gradient times the gradient now is equal to yes. minus one, and it's always like that. I don't understand why is it always like that. All right. Remember when we did in in grade ten, we did the gradients of parallel lines. Ma'am, what did we say about the gradients of parallel lines that they are? That they are uh, perpendicular. Oh shoot! I the lines are perpendicular, but that tell what does that tell us about the gradient of this first line and the gradient of that one over there? That they, they are, are equal, ma'am. That they are equal. And then we also had perpendicular lines, and we said that the the gradient of the perpendicular line, right, is and the right. gradient of the if we find the product of these two, they need to give us? Minus 90 degrees, ma'am. Well, they're going to give us a 90 degree angle, yes? Or what should the, the product of the two of them be, give us? Uh, minus one. Good, minus one. So now this drawing that we've got over here tells us, or the, the theory or the law around equations of a circle and tangents tells us that when there is a tangent that touches my circle once, the line from the center to the tangent creates a 90 degree angle. So what then can we say about the gradient of this line and the gradient of that line? They should be equal to? Minus one. Minus one. Okay, and this is where we're getting all of this funky information that we're working with over here. Oh, okay, thank you, ma'am. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am, it does make sense. So like, it's always like that. Always, always. As long as we have um, two lines that are perpendicular and we find the equations of those two lines, the gradients will um, will multiply to give us negative one. Okay. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome, my sweetie. Okay. All right, cool. So now we cannot sub in the point three one because the point three one does not lie on my tangent. The only point we can sub in here is going to be six five. And I'm like, everybody's already found the answer because I was busy there explaining. All right, so we're going to sub in the point six, five, and we're going to find the value for C. So I'm gonna go five is equal to negative three over four X plus C. Five is equal to negative, oops, sorry. I need to replace X with my value for X, which is six. So this is gonna be negative 18 over four plus C. C is equal to five plus 18 over four, which is equal to 38 over four. Therefore C is the same as 19 over two. And I would recommend that we keep it as a fraction. I would recommend we keep it as a fraction just for posterity's sake. Some of these fractions, um, give us too many decimals for us to round off. So it's, it will be easier for us to keep it as a fraction. All right, so the equation of my tangent will then read y 
is equal to negative three over four X plus 19 over two. Okay, it's not to say that you're wrong. Okay, if you, if you write it as 9.5, it's easy enough, but there are other questions with tricky decimals. Okay, so we don't want to bump into that kind of, kind of issue. All right, okay, give me a thumbs up. How are we feeling about solving this kind of question? I feel like you guys are gonna fly through these. Okay, Keith has given me a thumbs up. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> I need to see who this is. Lesero's like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on? Okay, it's fine, Lesero, it's okay. The reason why I'm saying it's okay is because I'm gonna give you another example. And I'm going to ask you guys the exact same thing, except this time you're on your own. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to try and solve this one yourself. Okay, so this one also says, find the equation of the tangent. Now, again, remember the tangent is a straight line. Okay, and our radius is also a straight line. And they've given us a point on our radius. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to work that out and then we'll come back and speak about it. All right, go for it guys. You guys are really, really doing well. I love the focusing. Look at Le Ciro is busy writing on the pen, you know? Everybody's just on it. So you I'm understand. just humbly, yeah. But I'm just humbly asking everybody to mute, please. Like when you're not talking to us, it's, it's really recommended for you to just mute like this. We don't hear the background. Um, so that will be really great, my people. Y'all are doing amazingly well. Okay, Pinga saying, ma'am, what's the steps of factorizing the X and Y values? We're going to talk about that in a bit. But Pinga, don't worry too much about that because in this particular example, we've already given you the, the circle center points. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. For now, if you could just solve for the equation of the tangent for me, we'll talk about what um, the steps to finding that would be. Okay. We'll talk about it in just a second. I'm going to give everybody a chance to finish. And once you're done, guys, please just drop the fire emoji in the chat for me because it's my favorite emoji. And I want to see how fast we're moving. Okay. Thank you, Ayanda. Yes, how it is, it is. Thank you, Pumi.
All right, I'm getting quite a lot of um, fire emojis in the chat. So I'm happy to continue. Yes, Ludwina, please tell me if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly and, and, and help me pronounce it correctly. Hello. I'm seeing your hand is up, but you're not unmuting. Oh no. All right, okay, when Ligwina figures out how to unmute, I'll have a conversation with them for, for now. All right, we're gonna quickly continue um, with the question over here. Oh, you wanted to try the question? No, absolutely, absolutely, please unmute. Please, 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 please let's do it. Let's do it together, uh, you and me. Rina, yes, I go. I there go. we well go. Done. <laughs> how are you doing, my sweetie? I'm good, thanks, in yourself, ma'am. I'm good, thank you. Um, just tell me, uh, how do I pronounce your name? Because I want to get Led it right. Ledwina. Okay, excellent. All right, Ledwina, what's the first thing we're going to do, my sweetie? Um, Ma'am, the first thing I did was find the gradients of the radius. Good. Um, good. I got two. Mm -hmm. I said three minus minus one over four minus two i got four over two which gave me two and then i found the radius of the tangent by multiplying oh i got the radius of the tangent by that rule that the that they should that the product of the two should equal minus one and mm -hmm. i got my um gradient for my tangent as minus a half Okay, and we're going to pause right there for just one second, my sweetie. Okay, remember when we're calculating for the gradient, hey? Don't make mistakes, okay? Remember that we need to take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, so that means for my top, for my y oh, values, I, I need to take x2 minus negative 1. Okay, so I, I I thought I misheard, but I don't think so. All right, so we need to make sure we're taking y and y together and x and x together. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So we need making a mistake. I I can guarantee you now we probably give you a continuous accuracy mark, um, yes. but at the moment because we are in a metric section, um, we can't be too lenient on on us making tiny mistakes like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I see the mistake no now. No worries, my sweetie. You know what? It's good that we're catching it here and not in a test, um, which would be which would be very bad if we got it in a test. It's good that we're making these mistakes at Watobi so that we don't make them at a test. All right. So um, if anybody else wants to try the question, I'm happy for you to put your hand up. I'm just gonna quick oh Kamahelo, there we go. Hello, Kamahelo. Hi, ma'am. My sweetie. All right, do you wanna fill me in on what you did for this question? So I said two uh, plus one because um, ne negative multiplied by negative is gonna give us a positive. Good. And then I said four minus three. Good, four minus three. And then it gave me three. Good, so the MRAD is three. And then what did we do with MRAD? And then this means we have our, and then we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna use the y is equal to mx plus c. Mm -hmm. y is equal to mx plus c. And then we're gonna substitute the point uh, four and two. So it's gonna be y is equal to three x plus c. And then we substitute in four and two. Mm, okay, now we're gonna have to pause again. All right, so remember Kamakhelo, what you've given me here is the gradient of this line, not of that one. So how oh. are we supposed to get the gradient of the other line? We're supposed to uh, make sure, like, I don't know how to explain it, but... M red time, tan is equal to? Negative one. One, all right. Okay, so we need to, again, make sure that we're following the steps 100%. But Kamakhelo, thank you so much for bringing us this far. Hmm? Thank you, ma'am. Very welcome, my sweetie. Thank you for coming to us to make the mistakes and not making them during a test. Okay. 
Uh, Zadal, Zadalia, I hope I'm saying that correctly. You're going to have to help me pronounce your name. Zadalia. Hi, we pronounce it? Hello, my sweetie. Please help me pronounce your name. It already looks so beautiful. I want to know how it sounds. Oh, thank you, ma'am. My name is Zadalia. Oh, it even sounds better. It even sounds better. Thank Zadalia. You so much. Um, thank you very much, ma'am. It, like, it sounds like the name of a flower. All right. Okay. What, are, what did you do, my sweetie, from this point on? So instead of substituting the three, I substituted mm -hmm. in negative one over three for gradient. Good. So, so uh, M after that, mm -hmm. I substitute. Oh, sorry, ma'am. <laughs> then no after problem. that, I substituted in the point. Um, Four two. Good. So we got y I, negative one three one over three x plus c. Are we together here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Good. So tell me, what did you write from this point on? Then I substituted in the point four two. Good. So, so I two. substituted. Yes, yes. Yes. Two. Like that. Plus C. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. And, then, and what else did you get? Then for the value of C, I got 10 over 3. Beautiful. 10 over 3. Without skipping a beat, my sweetie. All right. So what did your final equation for our tangent look like? Y is equal to? Negative 1 over 3x plus 10 over 3. I could not be any prouder. Just, just more. Thank you so much, ma'am. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, well done. All right. Okay, I saw Tokozile saying, ma'am, please try. Absolutely, Tokozile, because we have so many more questions to go. All right. Gatleho, if you're feeling like trying as well, I've got another question for you guys. So I want you guys to solve it first, and then I'll give you guys a chance to answer it for me. Okay? I just want everybody to be on the same, on the same level. Um, I don't want you guys just giving them the answer. I want everybody to give it a try. Okay. All right. Here's our next question. Oh, okay. Before we continue, let's talk about this. Okay. Yes. Tokozila, I was about to, I think I was about to talk about the same thing that you might be asking about. Yes, Tokozila, you can unmute. Um, Ma'am, I wanted to ask, um, are we allowed to use other formulas and not only the Y equals MX plus C? Yes, and I'm suspecting you wanted to use the y minus y1 is equal yes. to m multiplied by x minus x1, 100%. You can use either of them because they're going to get you to the same answer. Okay, Thank there'd you, be no you, issue with either of them. All right, my sweetie. Okay, all right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this over here. Now, teacher Lee was nice enough in this particular question to give us the circle center. She gave us the coordinates of the circle center. Now, unfortunately, this equation that's been written over here is not in its standard form. It's not in the standard form of a, the equation of a circle. How would we get it back to the standard form? I'm just gonna remind you guys, x minus a, all squared plus y minus b, all squared is equal to r squared. Yes? Tokozile, what are we going to do, my sweetie? Completion of a square. Absolutely, we're going to complete the square. And we're going to do it together at the same time, yes? We're going to do the x1 and the y1 at the same time, yes? All right, I'm going to give everybody just a second. We already know what the answer needs to look like. We know that the answer needs to look like my x coordinate is 3, my y coordinate is 1. Let's see if it actually matches up. I would like you guys to take this equation that teacher Lee's given us over here, and I would like you guys to complete the square simultaneously for um, x minus six uh, x and y or x squared minus six x and y squared plus two y, and then give me the radius. Tell me that r squared is equal to something. That's what I'm actually looking for when asking this question. Okay, find me r squared, and the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we complete the square. I'll give you guys a few minutes. You've got about four minutes, okay? But completing the square doesn't really take that long. Um, so yeah, maybe three minutes, mm, I don't know. And then you can put whatever emoji you would like to in the chat for me, 
any emoji you would like. See, Zadalia is already done. See how it's already done. I don't even know why I'm I'm wasting time. <laughs> I'm, I'm wasting time giving you guys minutes and minutes. I should have just given you seconds. Guys, you're putting me to shame. It's a good thing. It's a good thing, but you guys are amazing. Well done. Nice one, Chrissy. <laughs> Oh, I see. Some of you guys already did it at the beginning by mistake instead of finding the tangent or oh, instead of using the point three and negative one. Okay. Uh, Mange is like 10 question mark. I don't like that question mark. We should know. <laughs> we should know. All right. Hi, Shania. I love that one. Mm, Pumi with the robotic thumbs up. Love it. Okay, Pinga, we're going to go through it just now and we'll see what it is that we're supposed to do in this in this sense, okay? <clears throat> All right, so let's remind ourselves um, how to complete the square, okay? I know, Asanda, I'm just like, what? Guys, what? <laughs> okay, so we're going to remind ourselves quickly on how to complete the square. Now, remember, when we want, we're going to have an x squared value plus bx, some b or whatever. And in order for us to find the c value that we have, we're going to say that c is equal to b divided by two all squared. So the coefficient of x, this coefficient of x divided by two, and then we're going to square it. So we're going first going to start with x squared and minus six x. So we're going to substitute over here and we're going to have x squared minus 6x plus. Now to find c, remember we need to take b over 2 all squared. So we're going to go open brackets, negative 6 divided by 2 all squared. Okay, that's the num that's what we're going to get over there. Now we know that negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3 and negative 3 squared is positive 9. So we're going to get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, and all of this is going to equal to 0 on this side. It's equal to 0. But this 9 that I've added over here, it's a foreign object. We can't just be adding things wherever we feel like adding it because my answer is actually equal to 0. So if I want to get my answer back to 0 again, I need to say plus nine, minus nine. I'm going to put my minus nine over here. Okay, I'm going to use it in just a little bit. Right, now we've tackled that x squared minus six x part. We need to then tackle the y squared plus two y part. So we're going to go y squared plus two y plus, and then we're going to use the same formula for c, b over two squared, and we're going to go two divided by two all squared. Right, so y squared is plus 2y. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is plus 1. But I'm adding this to my equation over here. So I'm going to go plus y squared plus 2y plus 1. But now if I'm adding a foreigner over here, I must also add his reciprocal because I need to get back to 0. So this must also be minus 1. Okay, ah, Pinga, that's where we were not quite 100% getting it. All right, so this is what we're going to get over here. But we're going to notice that if we group these, if we group these two, oh, these three terms over here, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is a perfect square, right? And it perfect squares as x minus 3 all squared plus, and then we need to take this one over here, if that, we group that as a perfect square, it's gonna give us y plus one all squared. And then I still got negative one minus nine, which is negative 10 is equal to zero. I now know that I just want this part on the side. So I'm gonna take my negative 10 over to that other side. So when I complete the square, I'm gonna have x minus three all squared plus y plus one all squared is equal to 10. So my radius squared, is equal to 10. If I were to look for my radius, then I would then find the square root of 10. And that would be 
my radius. Just give me a thumbs up if that's something that we're familiar with and that we are able to do. Okay. Hi, Kamo, hello. Thumbs um, up, guys. Yes. yes. So I believe there's a quicker way that we can actually do that, right? Oh, really? All right. Show me, show me, show me, show me. I'm always um, keen to learn new things. Show me. No, don't go down. Please go up. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay <laughs> so we're gonna say um uh let me just check my book it's gonna be x minus three squared mm -hmm. um minus uh let me see minus nine mm -hmm. plus y plus one so not one plus oh what my plus is plus one squared minus one is equals to zero. Mm -hmm. And then we're okay. gonna take the minus nine and the minus one to the other side, and then they're gonna give us a ten. Excellent, one hundred percent. Yes. So I I've done exactly what you've done, Kamukhalo. It's just that I've isolated that minus nine and that minus one that you were talking about. I just put it as close as possible to my equal sign so that I can just take them over. Okay. Oh, all right. All so right. You and I are kind of doing the same thing in tandem. I do know that um, I used to have a teacher who, when they plus nine on the right, on the left hand side, they also plus nine on the right hand side so that it balanced out. So you could also have done that. But um, I think, in essence, we're all kind of sort of doing the same thing just in a different order okay all right but i love Thank that you. and if that works and if that works for you my sweetie keep keep that way okay otherwise you're gonna jumble your brain with too many things just keep though keep it the way that you know how to do it okay all right. Thank. thank you ma'am you're very welcome my sweetie excellent all right okay let's let's get to another question that's going to yes two more questions i love that energy i love that energy it's like, let's go, let's do it. All right, here's example nine, guys. Okay, now example nine is a little bit different. It's a little bit different. In the diagram alongside M, which is negative two in one, is the center of our circle. So they start by giving us the center of our circle here. Here we go, right? And they say that the line Y is equal to a half X plus seven is a tangent to the circle at point P. And then they say calculate the coordinates of P. So they don't give us the coordinates over here of P, our X and Y coordinate. We have to now find the coordinates. What are we going to do, guys? Any suggestions? Who's got an idea? Yes. Where did you go? Oh, no. Hello, oh, there we go. Yes. <laughs> I got that. Uh, Ma'am, first we're going to like just take the gradient of y and then just um what's that? Mm, make the reciprocal of it, ma'am. So so that we can find the gradient of r. If that makes sense, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it does. So what you're saying is we're going to take the gradient of the tangent over here and we're going to use it to find the gradient of the radius. Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Excellent. You, you hold so genius. Negative two. Beautiful. Good. We know that m tan times m rad is equal to negative one. Therefore, I've got my m tan this time, so I'm going to find my m rad. So m rad will be equal to negative two. All right, Kakaho, you're on to you're off to a wonderful start. What's our next step? And then, ma'am, we write the gradient formula. We're going to say um, y one minus y two over x one minus um, x two equals to um, the gradient basically and then we substitute the ones mm -hmm. that we already know and then then we solve oh then should okay. i do it <laughs> no 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 we can do it we can do it together there's no there's no rush all right so we can go y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1 is equal to the gradient m, which we have at the moment. So we're just going to substitute what we have. Right. But I'm going to tell you just now, we're going to run into a bit of a problem, my sweetie. I'll show you why. Okay. If I substitute in my y2, let's say I'm going to name this one y2 and this one y1. I mean, x, x2. I will. Okay. y2 and x2. I'm going to get two. Now I'm lying. Okay. I'm going to get one minus y1 over negative two minus x1 is equal to our gradient, which is negative two. Now, the issue that I'm going to have here is that I still have two unknowns, okay? And it's almost like I'm about to go the long way around to find the thing that I'm looking for, okay? I mean, uh, Faye, I'm seeing, yes. Ma'am, I wanted to ask, ma'am, are we gonna have to, whilst using like the the gradient for the tangent line, ma'am, why don't we actually look for the point of P, ma'am, using the gradient of the tangent line? Is that possible? Um, yes, but in order for me to find the Y value of P, I need an X value and I don't have one. And in order for oh. me to find the X value, I need a Y value. And I don't have that either. Okay. okay. So what we're okay. trying to do now is we're trying to look at what exactly we've got. Okay. Oh, yes, ma'am. All right. You, I'm gonna try and explain. I'm gonna try and explain, Faye, and we'll see where we're going with this. I just want to see what Nolutando has to say. Hi, Nolutando. Um, hi, ma'am. Hey, my sweetie, what's up? Okay, so after getting the gradient of the radius. Um, aren't we going to um, put it into the formula and find the um, line of the radius? Like y is equals to minus 2x plus c, and then we find c, and then we equate the two, the two lines to get x and then substitute to get the y value of p. 100%. And I'm going to tell you, Katleho is not actually wrong we can actually get to that exact point. But here's, here's the point I was trying to make. In order for us to solve for X and Y, we can't do it simultaneously with what you've given us here. So the only thing we could possibly solve for here is for the equation of the line. So we're gonna go back to the beginning either way, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative two minus X1. So I'm gonna multiply the side by negative two minus X1. And those two, well, yeah, those two will cancel. I'm actually multiplying it up here. <laughs> Negative two minus x one. Okay, there it is up top there, so that those two can cancel. So what I will end up with is one minus y one is equal to, and then I can distribute. I'm going to get four minus two x, right? X one, and then I'm going to take this one over to the other side, and I'm going to end up with negative y1, negative y1 is equal to four minus two x1 minus one. So negative y1 is equal to negative two x minus five. Whew. Yo, hey, I went far. I went far. I'm lying. Okay, this was positive actually. Plus two x, plus two x, plus two x. Now I need to divide through I need to divide through by negative to get my y on its own. y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. Okay. Do you see how we end up with a straight line equation again? Okay. So it's going to take us forever. Yeah, I, I understand, Kamohelo, because what we're doing is we're almost going around in circles. Okay. So this is what we're going to do, guys. Okay. This is what we're going to do. And it is three, it's not even five anymore because ma'am's maths, maths was not matching. It was not matching. Yes, it was supposed to be three. All right, here's what we're going to do. Okay, before I confuse you all, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the, the gradient of the radius and we're going to sub it into y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, yes, Faye. 
Oh, uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, it was just a question about the um, the five that you, the three that you made a five, ma'am. That was my only question, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Oh, Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Yes, I, I I picked it up after you guys mentioned it. Yes, it was four minus one, not four plus one. So it was supposed to have been three. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, Katla, hold. You want to finish this up? Oh, sorry. Hold on. Unmute for me. Hi, Katla. Hold. Uh, Ma'am, I don't know, ma'am. Can you please just go back from where I left it and then ma'am will tell me if I'm wrong or right? Because okay, ma'am, well, I was just going to do it like in a day is equal to x2 minus x1 is equal to the gradient, which is m2, I mean, minus 2, yes? Yes, ma'am. And then you're going to say, um, what's that? 1 minus y1, right? Um, All over... Mm -hmm. Uh, no, ma'am, not y. You substitute the, the coordinates. Oh, ma the value 1. Okay, okay. So 1 yes, minus uh, y yes. over? Yes, over negative 2 minus x1. Mm -hmm. Equals to negative 2 over 1. Okay. And then, ma'am, Instead of like going the long way, ma'am, you know that the denominator mm -hmm. equals to one, and then you know that the numerator equals to, you just break it apart, you solve it, and then mm -hmm. you combine it again, if that makes sense. I don't I know if it's mathematical, it. though. <laughs> it actually is. It's called a rise and a run. Yes, it is. So you said y minus y1 is equal to negative two, and negative two minus x1 is equal to one, correct? Uh, ma'am, it's actually negative one and then two, ma'am, because the negative does not really depend. It doesn't really matter where it is. But when, ma'am, when okay. I solve it, the one is the negative one. Okay, so you made the top part two and the bottom part negative one, like that. Mm, and now she's gone. Oh no, silence. silence. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we, we, we would find the same answer if we got here. Y would be equal to negative one and X would also be equal to negative one. Okay, you can, can you not unmute my sweetie? Just oh, ma'am, I couldn't unmute, but I just, oh, no. but I just did it right now, ma'am. Mm. So ma'am, should we try it or? Yes, I want to see if we'll get the same answer if I do it and if you do it. Okay, so what was your answer for y? Y1 was equal uh, to? Y1, ma'am, it was equal to 3, ma'am. Okay, yes, y1 is equal to 3 and x is equal to? Negative 3, ma'am. Negative 3. Okay, so you got 3 and negative 3. Okay, all right. Um, let me just make sure I'm getting this correct. Okay, something doesn't add up over here because if this is two over here and we send the one over, this should have given us a one because this would have been two minus one. So our answer over here should have been negative one. Unless you've swapped, swapped around the negative two over here and the positive one over there, then both answers could not be three and negative three. All right, let me just go back a little bit, guys, and have a look at how I possibly would have done it and see if we get something similar to what Katla was talking about. All right, so I would have just taken the gradient that I've got. Okay, would have taken the gradient that I've got, substituted it into the formula. Y is equal to negative two X plus C, and I know that I have a point on my radius. The point on my radius is negative two and one. Okay, so I would then go sub in negative two and one. One is equal to negative two multiplied by one plus C, right? This would give us negative two. When it goes over to the other side, it becomes positive two, so my C will equal three. So, hmm, all right. What have I done again now? Okay, I know what I've done again. 
Yes. We just solved <laughs> the C value, right? Of a straight line. So, <laughs> Oh, guys, guys, the, the English is not Englishing today. Like, it's not. My Y value is one and my X value is two. Negative two. <laughs> Negative two, therefore, right? Therefore, my C, yes. So my C should have actually been equal to negative three. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. My bad, guys. All right. So I've got two equations now, guys. I've got Y is equal to a half X plus seven, and I've got y is equal to negative two x minus three. And then I can solve for these simultaneously. Do, 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 make that one, do, do, make that two, sub the one, um, sub the one into the two. So I'm gonna go half x plus seven is equal to negative two x minus three. And then we can solve for x. We can solve for x here. So I'm just going to take the negative two X over to the other side and take the seven over to the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna end up with half X plus two X is equal to negative three minus seven. Of half X plus two X should give us three over two X. Oh, five over two X. Five over two X is Definitely equal to five. Yeah, over two X. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Again. Thank you, teacher. Teacher Yules. I'm just, yeah, <laughs> my brain is befuddled a little bit. All right, I'm going to multiply both sides by two. I'm going to get five X is equal to negative twenty, and then I'll divide both sides by five. Therefore, X must be equal to negative four. Okay, so yeah, I'm suspecting somewhere. Uh, the, the, the method that we used might not work out, especially when we don't know which of the values is negative and which one of them is positive. Okay, yes, Kamohelo. Can I run the poll while they're busy asking questions? Is that fine, Teacher yes, Coco? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Guys, please, 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 before you log out, because I see some of you are already logging out, please, please just try to do the poll for us. Thank you. Kamohelo? Um, teacher, um, yes. how would this question be marked? How many marks would it take? Um, probably about four. Okay. Um, we can't give you a mark for the gradient we've already given you because, um, because we've already given you the gradient. So we're only really gonna give you an answer, a mark for the gradient if they're being generous. Okay, the gradient of the radius. They might even not do that, but they'll definitely give you a mark for the value of the y-intercept. And then they would give you a mark for equating these two together. And then possibly a mark for finding x and then using one of the y's to find the answer for y. All right, guys, am I scrolling up? Am I scrolling down? Okay, scrolling up, okay. Yes, oh, how, no, that's no. what we would do. We would do that. Yes, Camarello. Oh, my name is oh. Camarello. Hi, Camarello. Hi, who am I speaking to? Uh, I've got to be speaking to Ego Brokers. Oh, yes, yes, Ego. Yeah. What's up? So, ma'am, I was thinking. What if we found the gradient and then we equated it to uh, two minus y over one minus x, and then I'll just cross multiply. Then I'll find it in terms of x, and then I'll just do simultaneous. Okay, so you said two minus y is equal to over? No, there was just uh, an example. I was just using an example, yeah. That's not the answer. I'm just saying, is it possible to do it that way? Okay. To say say again what you've said, Eagle, just so I'm understanding you 100%. 2 so, minus y? No, that's not the answer, ma'am. That's just something else mm -hmm. I was writing. Okay, so, cool. I, I just want you to you. explain that particular concept to me so that we're on the same page, my boy. Oh, so if we calculate the gradient of mm -hmm. the tangent and we found... Um, uh, excuse me, the gradient of the, the radius. And then we, mm -hmm. we 
we say that y2 minus y1, the formula of the gradient, and we substitute, knowing that we have two unknowns. Then mm -hmm. we just cross, we cross multiply, and then we still have two unknowns, but we find it in mm -hmm. terms of x. And then we keep- so You're um, going to make x the subject of the formula. Yes. Okay, all right. Which you can do 100%. It won't make a difference because then what you will be doing then is solving for y before you solve for x. Okay. Oh, okay. It's just, it's just, it's the same steps, except you're going to find y first and then go back and find x. Oh. All the same. Okay. Mm, nice guys. I just love how much this class is. We have like nice conversation. Loving and it. Yeah, did really I well. wish we had gotten a little further than this because I, I thought we'd squeeze two questions in, but I'm happy that most of you guys understand what's going on with the with the concept. Yeah. Amokhelo, do you still have a question, Masridi? Um, You're very welcome. Um, um, you see, well, I think it was Katlara. She got three and negative three, I think. Hmm. In an exam situation, how do you know that you got that wrong? Like, how do you notice what it, like, uh, okay, these that are the wrong answers. Thing. Yeah, because she thought she had got it right, but then. Okay, so okay, Kamakhan, I'm just going to go back to what she had been doing and I'm going to explain. It's like wh what she's doing isn't particularly wrong. It's not. Okay. If we go back to grade nine, when we first learned about the Cartesian plane, okay, we learned that if I have a point over here at zero three, and I have another point up here at six eight, right? In order for me to calculate the gradient, I can do the rise. So how far up do I need to go to get from three to eight? I would go up by five. So my y would be up by five. And how far would I have to go from zero to get to six this way? My run, that would be six. So my gradient would have been five over six. Now I can use the idea of a rise and a run only if I have been given two points, because then I can tell which one of them is positive if need be and which one of them is negative. In this situation, in this situation where they give us the formula y is equal to half x plus seven, and we find the perpendicular gradient, we find the perpendicular to the gradient, we get that our perpendicular to the gradient is negative two over one. Okay, now the issue here, because we've got a circle, um, attached to our tangent, we don't know whether the two, the, the negative belongs to two or whether it belongs to one, which means we're not sure if it's a rise or a fall, and we're not sure if it's a run to the right-hand side or if it's a run to the left-hand side. So we then will have to start playing a guessing game, which means we'd end up with two answers we would end up with two answers. So we can then say y minus y1 over x minus x1 is equal to negative two over one. And then I have to make an executive decision. What if the negative belongs to the top? Now I'm gonna have y minus y1 is equal to negative two. And at the bottom, I'm gonna get x minus x1 is equal to one. In this case, then I can solve for both of them. I can. And then I'm just going to take the, the point that I have. I know the point to sub in that I've been given is negative two and one. So I'm going to sub in negative two and one, right? So I'm going to end up with one minus y1 is equal to negative two. And I'll, I'll have negative two minus x1 is equal to one. I can solve for y. So my y is going to equal to negative two minus one is negative three. And my x, this is y one, x one will be equal to one plus two, which is equal to three. But, but I also could have chosen 
for the Y value to be positive and for the X value to be negative. Now I've got two sets of answers for X, okay? So it's not working out the way that I would have thought it would work out if I had looked at what the whole question is asking of me, okay? So I need to find a way to like to find a point where the two actually touch. The only way I could possibly do that is either by using the equation of the circle. So I could have equated the equation of the circle with the equation of the tangent or the equation of the radius with the equation of the tangent. Okay, that's the only two ways that I could possibly do it. All right. Yes, Zadelia. Uh, Bye, Tisha. Uh, thank you. Yes, my sweetie, what's up? Um, Ma'am, this is not completely related to this, but it is related to the entire like topic of tangents and okay. lines and everything like that. Sure. Um, it's now this question that we have to do in our homework. So they give us that a given line, which is y is equal to k minus x and the circle x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 2y is equal to 13. Plus 4x minus 2y is equal to 13. 13. And they tell you to find the value of k. Yes, but then they say in sub-questions, for which values of k will the line be attached to the circle, a secant of the circle, or an exterior line of the circle? So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to find how to go like about it. Okay, all right. So they want you to tell, they want to find out which part that will this be a tangent, a secant, or a what was the last one? Exterior. Okay, an exterior. All right. So um, remember something that we did when we were doing functions at Elia. We had the Cartesian plane. Okay. And we knew based on the discriminant, which is equal to B squared minus 4AC. Thank you, Camarello. All right, B squared minus 4AC. We knew from the discriminant that if my discriminant came out as zero, that means that my parabola only touches the graph once. Yes, that's when the discriminant is equal to zero, right? And if I got the discriminant is equal to two answers, that means that my parabola is sitting below the x-axis and there are two points where it cuts. Mm -hmm. But if my discriminant gave us a negative answer, if I got a negative answer, then my parabola is actually sitting above, it doesn't actually cut my x-axis and I won't be able to find any any parts where it cuts, right? So these were all the things we were able to find out using the discriminant. So what we're actually trying to do is we're trying to find out if we will actually find two values for K if we were to solve this. Now, remember, if we look at what we've got over here, if we look at what we've got, this is going to give us an X value and a y value, okay? It's going to give us an x value and a y value. So we need to first complete the square, okay? Oh, Tokozila, I'm so glad, thank you. <laughs> All right, okay, we're going to complete the square first. Thank you, Fence, have a good night. Complete the square, okay? And then when we get those two, when we get those two values, that will give us the point at which our tangent y is equal to k minus x would touch the graph. If, the, if this y is equal to k minus x only touches the graph, then we know that we need to get a discriminant of zero because our tangent only touches our graph once. If we get one value of k. If we get two positive values of k, that means that it's a secant because it would cut our graph in two. But if we can't find a value for K, so if K now starts giving us the negative, a negative value underneath the square root for the answer, 
then we know that it's exterior and they don't actually cut each other. Okay, are you getting what I mean by that? Yes, I do. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. 